Greetings and salutations. Today we are going to change the battery on a spectrum analyzer. It's an HP 8595E. Here is the board where the battery is housed. In a minute we're going to change, swap the battery out. Then we will go ahead and show you how we put that back into the unit. We have the battery here. It has two connections. Those are easily accessed here from the back side. You can see that there's a little bit of flux left on the board. That means that somebody has changed this out. According to the label on the back of the unit, it was last changed out around the year 2000. So it's been about 20 years. These should be replaced every eight years, according to Hewitt Packard. Otherwise, you risk losing the data, some of your calibration constants, and that would not be good. So let's hope that this works. There's a backup capacitor here, which is supposed to hold the charge for about eight hours so that you can swap this battery without losing any of the calibration constants. I have already gone ahead and written down all of the calibration data manually on sheets of paper so that if this is lost during the battery change process, I can just type it back in. It will be a pain in the butt, but it's a possibility. So without further ado, let's go ahead and remove this. Uh, we're just going to use a little bit of solder wick. This is Chemtronics. Um, always get solder wick with the rosin in it. If you don't, it's a pain in the butt. Alright, that is out. Close enough there. So now I'm just going to put a little extra solder to give us a nice joint there. Good enough, I think. We're going to test the voltage to make sure that everything looks normal. And we got 3.2 volts, beautiful. There is a cover plate that goes on here to make sure that things don't get shorted. That looks like the way it goes, so these little tabs here, we're going to head it, go ahead and put that on there. And then that will secure it. Similarly on this side, I'll just do this one first. It, I mean, it doesn't really matter, but this is the positioning one. This one has the oval slot, so that's meant to be done second. And one, and two, and voila. So that board is now ready to go. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the instrument in here and put it back together. All right, here is the instrument. Here is the board that we just got uh, the battery replaced on. So this one is going to go ahead and just snap in right there. There's these four things. This one back here is broken. It was broken when I got it off. Presumably the last person had a hard time taking it apart. So these guys are just clips. So the only thing we have to do really is align on them and clip it together. Alright, that is snapped into place. This one is going to go right here. The trick here is that this has a connector on this side and a connector on that side, so we need to go into this one, and then we need to get this back one to go in last, I believe. So, let's go ahead and line that there. That one will go down, kaboom. There's four screws to go in there. But I'm gonna go ahead and put this back one in first.
All right. And now we're going to go ahead and add the screws. The external housing is very straightforward. We just go ahead and slide it on. Four screws, the first four screws go right here. All right, everything's back together. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to fix the sticker here. The last battery was replaced in 2002, so it's been 13 years. We're going to throw on a fresh label there. All right, fresh label. The last one lasted 23 years. Let's hope that this one doesn't have to go that long until somebody decides to replace it again. Well, let's power up the unit and make sure that the calibration data is still in there, and then we'll be set to go. All right, the time I'm noticing is more or less correct. May 25th, 20... Except I'm not sure why it's not giving me the full date there. So now we're going to go ahead and check the calibration constants, which we've previously written down on a piece of paper. This is from the service manual uh, for the 8590 spectrum analyzer. So all you need to do is go ahead and go in there and it will give you complete instructions starting from page 202. We're going to push preset. Then we're going to enter frequency, minus 37. Hertz, and then we're going to push Cal, and then we're going to go for verify time base. Time base it says it's one two three. That is correct. We're going to go back to service Cal, flatness data, edit flatness data. So here's the data that I stored previously, table 3.5, 3.6, etc. Here's the data on the screen. We have the first one, I don't know why it has error though, but it has the 12 megahertz and it has the 0.84 minus 0.84, which is correct. If we go ahead and use the step functions here, um, we're next going to 84 minus 1.12, etc., etc. So all those numbers are matching up with the numbers I have in my chart here. So that is good. We haven't lost any of the Cal data there. So that part is all hunky-dory. One thing I'm confused about though is that the clock has gone out here. We no longer have the year there, but we do have the date and the time. So let's see if we can go ahead and set that clock. All right, so we're going to go to config, time and date, set date, So use the Hertz button as the enter, which is working, and now it's set. All right, so now we're going back to the previous menu. All right, the date and time are set, which is great. So let's go ahead and just push the preset and see if we're in any better shape here. So we know we've got the Cal data. We've got our date and time set again. So if we go back and... Try that just one more time. Let's see if we still get those error messages or not. All right, so once again, we're going to go ahead and push frequency, minus 37 hertz, and then we push the K 
cal, cal frequency. Oops, not what I was trying to do. All right, we have a main coil sense fail. I have no clue what that is. Let's go back to preset. Fuck off. That's not cool. All right. So in order to run through the sequences, you have to have the cal output push to the input, and then it will do everything correctly. Start over again, we will push frequency minus 37 hertz. We will then push the cal button and cal frequency. And this time, everything should work correctly. Alright, we push cal store, and we're all done. Now when we disconnect this, and push preset, no errors, everything looks normal. We can go ahead and put in test tone. So we're going to go ahead and put 300 megahertz minus 30 dBm. Press it through in there, we will then change the frequency here to 300 megahertz, and this band to 10 megahertz, and we nice tone, set the marker there, minus 31, should be minus 30, so the calibration is actually not quite as good as last time. I'm going to run through that calibration sequence one more time, just to see if we can get that a little bit better. Alright, we'll go ahead and store the cow, and then let's check out our tone one more time. There, and minus 30.1, which is perfect, so everything is looking good now, and we're going to call that a win. We will go ahead and power down. Thank you for your time. Hope you enjoyed. Hope your battery changes go smoothly.